So I always enjoy having conversations with you. Me too. Yeah. You know why? Why? Because I get so many responses of people saying how your material helps them. The, the, a lot of my clients, they're stuck. They don't, they don't have the courage to get out. They're scared of their narcissist. Yeah, I've got the dynamite that can help them get out. Exactly, you help them get in touch with their righteous anger. I'm big on that. Mm -hmm. A lady said the other day, I was talking to somebody on the phone, and she said, I love your righteous indignation. <laughs> There you go. I said, there you go, because I'm edgy. I'm mm -hmm. angry. I'm mad at the narc. Got no use for him. And you need to get away. Right. And why are you mad at them? Well, for any number of reasons. I mean, they're evil. Mm -hmm. They're slowly destroying uh, the woman, and yeah. they're slowly destroying the kids, which is mm -hmm. our focus today. Right. And they're getting away with it. Right. Nobody knows. The coverts, no one knows. And even the overt ones, people ignore it. They don't have the guts to confront them. So what's the difference? Right. I know you're right. married to a jerk, but hey, that's your problem. And a lot of, I think, and I'm just going to say women just for simplicity's sake, but I think a lot of women in particular, they will, they will stay too long in thinking that they are protecting the kids. Absolutely. Mm. And they are not. No. Part no. of what we try to do is, is convince them that's not the truth. I know you believe that. And moms mm -hmm. would, you would stay 40 years if, if it was gonna protect your kids. Right, because there's the good-hearted, children-loving, Christ-loving people right. who want to do what is protective over their kids, even if it's destroying them. Right. So, but I think it's important that we're having this conversation because they're not really protecting the kids uh -uh. by doing that, are they? No, it's a bitter mm -hmm. pill when they realize, okay, that's not true. Mm -hmm. I'll say, look, a number of things are happening here. Because uh, they'll often say, well, I, I am, I'm here as a buffer. I, I'm protecting them. He's abusing me, no question about that. But I'll take that because that's protecting the kids from yeah. getting abused. Mm -hmm. I say that's not true on a number of levels. They, w them watching you get abused is destroying them. Right. Mom is being shredded in front of my eyes. And it's actual abuse. It is. Yeah. Now, he'll abuse the kids, too, when you're not around, mm -hmm. frankly, uh, and even in front of your face. But he, as he abuses you, their self-esteem goes down, their security goes down, their view of you goes down. Right. I mean, right. respect, uh, love. Uh, mom's not protecting me. She's not protecting herself. Right. And it so models passivity. Yes. It, it models, it teaches them how to interact with that narcissistic parent. How? Right. By being passive, by being compliant, by exactly. by putting up with it, by staying. So. That modeling is strong. Mm -hmm. That's why I have these ladies. They, they, you begin to get a voice, you begin to speak up. That's part of your preparation yeah. to leave. You're not leaving tomorrow, but in the next few months or next year or so, you're speaking up, especially in front of the kids. You're gonna say things. Yes. It's not gonna be well received by the narc, of course. But that's you know a, what? That's a great point. Uh, yes. Get ready for the backlash. Right. But at least the kids see the tension. They see, oh, there's a point and there's a counterpoint. Mom's point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's standing up for herself. You're not going to have a long dialogue with the guy, but that can start to make a difference. If you say nothing and just take it, mom's yeah. wrong. So, Dad must yeah. be right. And you can say in the moment, like, that's enough. Um, you know, this conversation right. isn't going, we're good, and we're gonna end this conversation, teach the kids how to end a conversation right. respectfully, and then do a debrief with the kids in private right. where that narcissistic parent can't give input. Right. And you're letting the kids know truth, what was sinful about that behavior and that interaction. Right, and you'll do that over and over again as you prepare to leave, and you're getting mm -hmm. strong, and they're being more tied to you, connected to you, mm -hmm. oh yeah, and the narc won't like it, Right. Too stinking bad. Yeah. How much worse can your marriage get? I'll tell these poor ladies. Right. It's awful that you have no marriage now. You're going to get backlash. And they actually, I think they think, well, if they see us having conflict all the time, that's worse for the kids. No, it's not. Mm. Now they see their two points of view and you're standing up for yourself. And the mm -hmm. narc is wrong. You can say, that's a lie. That's not true. You're not mean. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, leave Johnny alone. If he's hurting one of the kids or abusing them even verbally, you can say, that's enough. Like he said, that's right. enough. That's right. not Johnny's fault, so you're gonna be the buffer. Right, right. Then he'll turn the guns on you. Well, okay, fine, that's actually mm -hmm. protecting the kid, but mm -hmm. the kid knows, mom's standing up for me. Right, and then you you go and you talk with the child, you know, why is that kind of language bad? Right. Well, what does God's word say about that kind of language? Right, yeah. the debrief's critically important. Yes. Just one-on-one, -on -one. hey, mm -hmm. let's talk about what happened 20 minutes ago, or earlier today. Mm-hmm. 
Because I'll tell these ladies in your offices too, Laurel. Can I call you Laurel? I always call you Laurel. <laughs> you can call me Laurel or Lori. I'm Both gonna are call you Lori because that's what I've always called yeah. you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we go to the same church home and a lot of people we around do. church know me as Lori. So yes. and we're close. One's and fine. we're friends. Yes. yes. And uh, this is a free country still, and I'll call you what I want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what should I call you? You call me Dave. Dave. I okay. go by Dave. Okay. Yes. So yes. Dave. So yes. yes, that was my heart with writing the book was so that parents could work with their children directly because oftentimes it's not effective to work with right. that narcissistic parent. Right. They'll just weaponize it and they'll use what right. you say later against you to create a wedge with you and your own children. And right. so I say work with the most mature person and that's oftentimes a child. Exactly. So, that's why, show the book. Don't let their crazy make your kids crazy. Is, yes. I think so vitally important for what we're talking about today. Yeah, how to shield your children from their narcissistic parents' control and manipulation. Part of the preparation for leaving, and then of course after you're gone and you divorce the dirt ball, it's mm -hmm. not gonna stop, mm -hmm. uh, at least for a while, if ever, and so that, that book will also help that process of healing continue. Yes, and, and yeah. teach the children what healthy relating is, teaching them about boundary setting, their identity, and also, I know you and I talk a lot about with regard to marriage, the scripture, Matthew 18, 15 right. through 17, and how God has a plan if someone continues in sin. And right. so children need to understand that process too. They, they have the right to yeah. separate from that narcissistic parent and not be abused. All right, you're not gonna ask me to do that. Yeah. You have whatever relation with dad you want, but understand what dad, I love my dad, this is my dad, but this is what dad's about, mm -hmm. oh yeah. And then, of course, once you affect the separation, and of course, I tell these people before I forget to say, yeah, you stop any and all efforts to change this narc. Yes. Stop it. Yes. Just that's a therapy technique. Uh, stop it. Yeah, uh, because marriage <laughs> counseling is a waste heart. of time. Yeah. These marriage intensives, you know, and there's some wonderful ones. They're inappropriate for the narc. Oh, he'll go mm -hmm. to check the stupid box. Yeah. And then part of the narrative is I went to a marriage intensive and spent ten thousand dollars, four thousand dollars. Yeah. Waste yeah. of time. And I think you and I have both written about a beautiful lady in the Bible, Abigail. Yes. And so I did a chapter on my first book, Don't Let Their Crazy Make You Crazy, called Pick Your Battles, because what you were saying is 100% dead right. So sometimes we have to teach our children, and sometimes the narcissistic parent will get a narcissistic blessing, but it's not that we're trying to, right. uh, like for example, I would go get my boys from when he had them out and he was drinking late at night right. and he had the boys, I would go get the boys. And yes, that is enabling him to stay at the bar and drink more, but I wasn't doing it right. for him. His sobriety right. was his right. to deal with. I knew he wasn't gonna get take sober. Care of the boys. It was yeah. to be there for the boys and pick the boys up and make sure that they're safe. So even though he got a little convenience blessing, that didn't matter to me anymore because my sole purpose was protecting those boys. So you have right. to pick your battles. You can't say, oh, because he might get a convenience blessing, I'm not gonna enable yeah. him that way. It doesn't matter. Once you detach and well, you decide right. that you're moving toward divorce, that you have to move toward divorce, then you start doing things like picking your battles. And I mentioned Abigail because that's exactly what she did. Oh man, and, yeah. and in a culture where she had no chance for that to work. Right. And she Whoa. she went as a woman and spoke to David directly. She did. Yeah. And also asked, was not done in that day and age. Right. And asked for forgiveness for her husband's behavior. Right. She right. actually was and that was that secondary blessing, mm -hmm. protecting his life. Yeah. He was not killed. Now God took him out later and through. Yeah. But he wasn't killed at the time. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, stop. It, all these ladies go through, the, the codependent ladies go through the phase of, I want to change my husband. I'm hoping and praying and yeah. doing everything I can. Let that go. You've mm -hmm. already done that. Not going to work. I wouldn't ask you to pick a paperclip off the floor. You're <laughs> done with that. Your needs don't bother. You're now protecting your kids, speaking up, getting a voice, getting strong enough in a secret way, because the narc won't know what's going on, to leave him. Yes. That's yes. the whole point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what have you seen happen when they do leave? Well, what they get, and there, there is so many benefits, it's just hard to mention them all. There is a tremendous relief. Mm -hmm. You are protecting your children. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. if it's 50-50, a lot of these states are, the moms will say, yeah, but he might get them 50% of the time. Number one, no narc is gonna spend 50% of the time with those kids. Right. He needs a new woman, a new narcissistic supply. He's gotta do clubbing and nightclubs. He's not. He might want that ordered because of the narrative. 
Uh, but he's not going to do that. But even if he would, unlikely, you still have them 50% of the time where you have total control. Precisely, because otherwise the kids don't have a safe place at all. Ever. Ever. Right. Any percentage of the time. So at least you can give them a place of peace 50% right. of the time. Of course, there'll be disruptions. It's hard on the kids. All that's true. And the narco will use all that to blame you. He'll keep up the, the abuse. But you now have a buffer. You're not living with them. Mm -hmm. So the relief and the peace and the joy and the happiness and the contentment are awesome. And now you're an independent person again. Mm -hmm. Everything you say isn't questioned or demeaned or downgraded. Right, right in front of you. Right in front of you and, every, and other people even. So I'll, I'll actually tell clients, you probably tell them the same, you actually have more empowerment as far as parenting by having two households. Absolutely. Yeah, because you, he's not or she's not in, inter, uh, interfering with it or undermining. Right, and yeah. you're constantly doing that as you know. We've got God's way, your way, mm -hmm. and we have the devil's way, his way, the evil mm -hmm. way. The kids can see the difference. When you're together, they don't see the difference. Right. And right. dad, the narc wins, which is the most horrible thing in the world. I've lost my kids. They've turned against me. My, my son is a narc, just like his dad, and he's married somebody who's abusing that woman. You're all seeing, you're watching this. And the girls you've raised are looking for dirt balls to yeah. marry. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, my the, goodness. They don't know what healthy relationships are, and so they're going to gravitate toward right. friendships and dating partners that yep. treat them like they're less than, that treat right. them like they're an extension of them. They don't right. They don't really understand how to pick healthy uh -uh. people. So. Once that pattern's established, mm -hmm. it's really hard to break it, mm -hmm. and you have less and less influence. Yeah. So the sooner we can get these ladies out, the better. Mm -hmm. Of course, I talked to a lady this last week, a lady in her, in her mid-60s, kids already raised and there's issues there. And she's thinking, well, it's too late to leave now. I said, no, it's not too late to leave now. No. You've got 20 more good years, maybe yeah. more. Yeah. Get away from this dirt ball. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, well, money, the issues, you can do it. I was able to convince her she's going to read some of the books. I think for her, I recommended Enough is Enough and my latest Escaping uh, Your Narcissist, which is the divorce process. Yeah, getting them out and, and yeah, it's not too late. Well, and... It is actually the most loving thing you could do for that narcissistic person. So it's not that you're choosing, this is another thing I see people staying stuck in, is this false guilt of, oh, I'm choosing myself over that narcissistic person. But the very most loving thing you can do for that narcissistic person is lead them toward repentance, lead them toward surrender and having Jesus as their authority. Yeah, saying I'm mm -hmm. done with you and I've had mm -hmm. enough, at least it's a wake up call, mm -hmm. may not work. Mm -hmm. See, I don't think like you do, uh, Lori. <laughs> I, 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 I never think, well, maybe that's good for the narc, who cares? Okay. But the truth is, it, there's an opportunity. Right. Hey, even God right. gives all of us opportunities. Yes. Fine. Yes. Of course, that will be at a distance. And frankly, don't care too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's possible. Mm -hmm. Well, that you're really good at getting them in touch with their righteous anger. I think more so what I do is help neutralize that false guilt. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I understand it, I've lived it. Like it's, yeah. it's just you right. absorb those projections and you feel bad for choosing yourself. Yeah, so. you're much more in touch with that. <laughs> yeah. I have tried to attach, attach to that and I simply <laughs> cannot. <laughs> but you're really good at getting them in touch with the righteous anger and that's what a lot of my clients need. Yeah, oh yeah, so. and it's a beautiful thing when you see that happening mm -hmm. and now they're really warriors for their children and they're speaking up. Mm -hmm. Because, because I guess again, when the mindset changes from well, yeah, I'm, I know I'm leaving. This is not the man for me. I have a biblical reason to leave and divorce him. Mm -hmm. Then what my dumb church says, I, I'm my pastor. I'm. Then you can shift over to okay, we're all get. I'm getting these kids ready. I'm bonding them to me, and I'm preparing to get them out. Yeah. No longer, you know, talk having the waste of time. Because in a normal uh, couple. You, you you talk about your kids in private almost all the time. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't call each other out in front of the kid. Well, he's right. doing that. You have to do the same thing. Right, but we're called to speak the truth and love, and that means confronting someone's sin right. if it's causing another one to stumble. Right. So. has nothing to do with the narc changing. And don't mm -hmm. have a private conversation with him later unless you're like wasting your time. Mm -hmm. He'll just bite your head off or laugh in your face. Yeah. You're done with that. But in front of the kids is key because this is this is this is the venue he chose. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a social setting and he's mocking you, you mock him right back, mm -hmm. and you give it to him. Mm -hmm. Hey, that protects you even socially. And this is all scriptural. This is it all biblical. Is. So dealing with the fool. Yeah, dealing with the fool. So I I want people to also understand that that labels are important because yes. the, you say narc. 
because why? Because it gives people an understanding of what that behavior is. Right. A lack of empathy, a gaslighter, someone who gives you silent treatment, someone who stonewalls, someone who is superior, constantly critical. There's so, there's so many descriptions, but right. it helps people heal. Yeah. It's not to condemn. It's so that the victims can understand, wait a minute here, there is something clinical that's wrong with this person right. that is causing me pain. So just a bad husband. Yeah. Uh, no, I dealt with them for 30 some years. They can actually make changes based on assertiveness. This isn't about that. This mm -hmm. is assertiveness uh, in the service of leaving him. Mm -hmm. And I use narc, small n, because we're mocking the narc. <laughs> yeah. Jesus mocked the Pharisees mercilessly. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that was not done in that day and age mm -hmm. ever. And God uses the word fool repetitively. He does. Or wicked. Right. He, he calls them the wicked. Right. So unscrupulous people that treat people with a lack of empathy, right. who delight in airing their own opinions, oh, who yeah. in, inflict abuse right. upon others because they want what they want when they want it. Right. So you start mocking the narc, even in subtle ways, the kids will pick up and the kids don't miss anything. And plus you're getting empowered. Oh, he'll hate it. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can always say, I was just kidding. Like he always says, mm -hmm. when he's ripping you, and then, and then you complain and he says, I was just kidding. Well, give him that right back. Yep. And you're gonna feel stronger. And it's gonna be because you mock the narc, you take away his power. We're taking away his power. And there's actually a Bible verse. Um, I can't think of what the reference is, but it talks about the someone that says something and says, I'm only joking. They're ah. saying that that's foolishness. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. it's in the Bible. <laughs> it is in the Bible. <laughs> So yeah. that's where I want people to understand. Like, we're not doing this to condemn other people. We're out here really trying to help other people understand the Bible and what God wants to well, right. wants us to do, wants our kids to yeah. do in the face of abuse. Yeah, right. What we're doing is rooted in the Bible. We're mm -hmm. both lockstep on that. You see videos from people that are of the world and don't know Jesus, and they can, there's some good content, anti-NARC content, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not rooted in Scripture. And, and so it falls flat. Well, and another effect I see happen if people don't leave and take a stand for righteousness is that eventually the kids might rebel when they yeah. grow up against that non-narcissistic parent right. and even God. Yep. And, and the Bible, right. they don't want anything to do with oh, that. Yeah. You're the Christian woman, you know, and, and dad is or, or is or isn't, but he's not acting that way. Oh, yeah, you lose. Mm -hmm. and, and the cause of Christ loses. And that's the worst thing of all because they don't want, the kids don't want to have a grown up life like you're living. Right. So why, so why would that. they choose Christ? Right. If you're staying and putting up with abuse because of Christ, their little minds don't understand. They're like, well, I won't choose that then. Right. And of course, we're seeing a lot of this in the culture. I'm not, I'm not gonna get married. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna live with a dirt ball. And there's plenty yeah. of those who love that. Mm -hmm. oh. No okay, commitment. You, right. Have, no a, have a kid or two. Mm -hmm. st still not married because I don't want that marriage. So you exit that marriage and God may have someone new for you. Mm -hmm. That's happened to someone I know and love who's sitting right here. <laughs> yeah. A yeah. wonderful man who, yeah. who, who God led the two of you together. That's what God can do. Right. And you could right. have that for many of these ladies mm -hmm. and some of the men too that are listening uh, down the road. You're, you'll be free to remarry and you can, and you can model that marriage. And I think that 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 my remarriage has been such a blessing for all of our kids yeah so oh yeah to see to see your tim interact with with your boys it's a thing of beauty yeah they, they respect him mm -hmm. and, and there's a connection and they know he cares about them and he's treating you like a queen it's mm -hmm. all good right man right. when they had so. nothing like that before right and they and i am very close with my boys and they found how to have a healthy relationship with their dad so they can go right. golfing or they right. can meet him for lunch. And so they had right. to work through all of that anger and but resentment. They, but they're good. And, yeah, they know he's not yeah. going to change, but that's mm -hmm. okay. But they found a place of how to enjoy him. It just is superficially. Well, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that save, it's very healthy. Mm -hmm. See, that's why uh, along the way you kept those boys close to you. You maintained your relationship with them and it's paid off. And of course, leaving, that's the line in the sand. I'm no longer going to put up with this evil behavior. I'm right. leaving, and I have every mm -hmm. biblical right to do so. And they, and they will, res most kids will respond to that. Well, and backing it up with scripture. So like uh, right. Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, only that which is helpful for building others up. So that's a benefit to those who listen. So when they would see their dad 
tear me apart verbally or tear one of them apart verbally. They had something in their mind. Yeah, well, right. wait a minute. God says this is wrong too. Right. They so, know it's wrong. Right. So it's not just choosing mommy or daddy. It's this is God's way. Well, right. right. Yeah, which this is very powerful. This isn't my idea. Yeah. yeah right. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm literally following what God says. Mm-hmm. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Tremendous description of, of narcissists. Mm-hmm. Uh, thousands mm-hmm. of years ago. And, uh, and, the, and the punchline is, have nothing to do with them. Right. Paul says. Right. Okay. Do not. There's so many scriptures that say, do not. Do right. not give... Um, them your attention do not give them your time right. that's not a request no that, that's a command that's it, an instruction right yeah. right mm-hmm. well if you want to bible doesn't say well you can put up with this and it's better for everybody no no mm-hmm. get away from them mm-hmm. this is real evil destructive behavior and if it's defined that way okay i've got no problem saying get out mm-hmm. and i'll help you get out mm-hmm. and you do a lot of phone appointments yes i with... do that's all i do is mm-hmm. phone appointments yes <laughs> well me too because yeah. there's so many people hurting around the country right yeah and we, so. we've got answers. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not just going to listen and say, "Oh well, I'm so sorry." No, here's a here's a book you can buy. Here's a process. Here's practical things you can do. Right, plans of based. action. Right, that's mm-hmm. what people need. Mm-hmm. And it's I think God is He's blessing both of us. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So it's always great to have conversations with you because we have the same yeah. heart. We want to just expose people to God's help. We do. Mm-hmm. And I think this is going to be an important one here for moms to especially moms and dads too, to hear yeah. that you're not protecting your kids by staying. Right. You're not. No. You're, you're actually hurting them. You don't mean to. But once you realize that, then start a process. Our books can help them of getting out and then keeping the kids close to you and walking with the Lord, which is, of course, most important. Yes. We don't want yes. to lose them to the faith mm-hmm. because of the home that they have grew up in. Mm-hmm. And there's great groups out there too so that they, they need to connect with other safe people. Right. So sometimes people's church homes aren't a source of support. Mm, so right. there's groups like Divorce Care right. that's great. And I just went to an event at a group called um, Life. So I believe it's a recovery right. group for people who are married to sexual addicts, anybody who mm, engaged okay. in pornography, right. extramarital affairs, uh, chat room stuff, all that okay. kind of stuff. And Boy, so it's good. a beautiful group and these women were wow. were there for each other and they had graduates and it was just a beautiful experience. Wow. So I want people to know that there are places out there there are other people out there who will support and love on them. Well, it makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. We're both building these communities, people helping each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phil Dugas of Dugas Creative, mm-hmm. who is taping us now, who's the producer. <laughs> we love you, Phil. Extraordinary yeah. business, and fine young man, married my daughter. Smart man, smart <laughs> individual. <laughs> right. And has produced two grandchildren. Yeah. Anyway, one of which Adorable. is named David. I'm just saying, they're beautiful. Oh. We sat next to Chloe, who was sleeping in church today. Anyway. Aww. But he has created a Facebook group, uh, Narcissist Free Zone. Really? Facebook group. I did not know that. Yeah, okay. and it's growing. We haven't even talked about this. Growing, people are help, posting things and helping each other. It's awesome. Oh, that's great. Practical help, encouragement. It's like, whoa. And we don't charge anything for it. It's free. That is huge. I'm so glad that you did that. I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Phil, do, I, was, I, had, I would never have thought of that. Mm-hmm. Phil thought of that. <laughs> He's great. He is great. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for coming and chatting, and hopefully we'll just keep chatting about different yeah, topics. Nobody can stop us. We can keep talking as long as we want to. <laughs> yeah. This would be it's, great. It's, there's a lot of narcissism, and it's on the rise. So. Oh, there is. Not mm-hmm. everybody believes that, as we know. Right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But anyway, it's mm-hmm. out there, and it's growing. Yes. But we're fighting it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so until next time. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs>